Hi, so today I'm finally going to talk to you about insurance, about insurance as a freelancer, more specifically as a freelance translator, but that should apply to all freelancers. It only took me a while because I've been trying to figure it out. I recently moved to the States and here you need to get insurance within two months of being in the States. And so I got it for here in South Carolina, but it turns out we're moving to North Carolina, so I had to move it there. But I have had experience with this because I've had to do this in Europe, in Asia, here in the States. Uh, yeah. Insurance is a real issue, especially when you're working for yourself because it differs all over the place. It really depends on so many different factors that I almost don't know where to start. Right away, when you start working, you're gonna see if you're incorporated as, an, as a corporation, as a partnership, if you're just working for yourself, sole proprietorship, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously, it depends on all that. It also depends on the laws of your country. It also depends on where your clients are and which country they are. So much of this can depend on so many different factors. For example, I was told uh, by a German translator that they, uh, whenever they do taxes, they have to factor in their insurance whenever they file their taxes, even when they're working for themselves. And I know in Italy, if you're working with other Italians, then you're supposed to uh, include the IVA, and which is the VAT tax. So here's my advice to you. Figure out what the laws are. First of all, Find someone else in your shoes. Find another freelancer. It doesn't need to be a freelance translator, just someone working for themselves or a freelancer in your country, close to you, and talk to that person. Chances are there's a, quite a simple way to go about it, but you won't get to that simple way by going on government websites, you know, necessarily talking to accountants or even lawyers. My advice will be to talk to someone in your shoes and see what they do. They probably have forums and stuff online where they discuss this as well. And once you have something in place, at that point, you probably should talk to a lawyer, at least once. If you have a friend who's a lawyer, then that's perfect. Otherwise, make one appointment with a lawyer just so you know you're fine because you don't want any surprises a year from now. That goes, I guess, for all the legalese and everything when you're setting up. Specifically talking about health insurance. Health insurance now is, once again, going to be different everywhere you are. So my advice to you would be not to include health insurance in any invoice for a client. No client wants to see extra payments being tacked on there, and you don't have to tell your client what you're charging for. What you should do is just include it in your rate. Figure out how much this health insurance will be per month, per year, whatever it is, and then put that in your calculation of expenses. That's it. That's the amount you need to earn per year. Don't invoice clients with it. Don't expect clients to pay for it because you'll find that all your clients are in different countries as well, which have their different laws. If they have to deal with you, who keeps invoicing them for uh, you know health benefits, and then they find another translator who doesn't do that, they'll say, well, I'll just deal with this other translator. This other translator might still be charging them for that, but they're not necessarily putting it in as a line item. But factor it into what you have to earn. If this means working more, then you have to work more. If this means charging more, then you should charge more. You don't wanna say you charge five cents per word, but then it comes out to seven cents per word because you're tagging on VAT and health insurance, et cetera, et cetera. Just charge seven cents per word and be done with it. That's the best advice I can give right now because seriously, the laws are so different everywhere you go. You should inform yourself, make sure that you're doing things legally and ethically and morally and that you're on top of things so you don't have to pay some huge payment at the end of the year or something. But otherwise, just charge your clients. Once again, this video was for Carmen Lowe who asked about health insurance as a freelancer. So hopefully that helps out with how to deal with it even though, once again, it'll be different no matter where you are, from country to country, region to region, province to province, state to state, etc., etc. Okay, thanks. Bye. And, 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 uh, yeah.